Back here on the show, going into the second segment of this live episode, talking about the New York Jets and their newest signing, Tyron Smith, from the Dallas Cowboys to be the New York Jets' new left tackle. A move that happened over this past weekend, only a one-year deal for the former Cowboys left tackle, but it could be worth up to $20 million dollars based on incentives and playing time. It's $6.5 million guaranteed with that other $13.5 million to be based and earned on playing time. The minimum playing time um, that needs to happen for Tyron Smith before he earns a little bit of those incentives and a little bit of that money is only 38%. So undoubtedly, he's probably going to get it just based on the way he's been trending recently with the injuries that he's dealt with the time that he's missed he's played he played 13 games last year and has stayed relatively uh on the healthy side in the last few years he hasn't played a full season since 2015 so it's not like he's been um this iron man always in playing every game based on his age as well he is on the older side but regardless of all of that i think it's still a good sign for this new york jets team that I talked about it on a segment before. With this team, it seemed like last year, everybody was ready to crown them AFC Conference Championships, ready to send them to the Super Bowl because they did have some reason to do it. Their defense was exciting. It was young. Sauce Gardner, Quinn, and Williams. They had all those studs really on the defensive side of the ball. So that was exciting. But offensively, once they got Aaron Rodgers, everybody assumed that it was going to be a transition into this contending team heading into the uh, 2023 season. And it really couldn't have been further from that. I know Aaron Rodgers got hurt, and I know it was a freak thing to have him injured just like four or five plays into the season. But after that, if this team was really prepared to jump into contender status and be ready to compete with the Kansas City Chiefs in their division with the Buffalo Bills and the Baltimore Ravens, I think you would have seen them in a lot closer games, and they put a lot of ugly performances out there, and I think most of that was because of the offensive line. They got a quarterback, but what good is a quarterback if you can't protect them and support them with the pieces around them? On top of that, it was just not a good look. I know Zach Wilson didn't perform to the best of his abilities, but again, the offensive line was in and out. They had a lot of missing pieces. Last year, they had actually nine offensive linemen play games at two or more positions across that offensive line. Arguably, their best offensive lineman, Elijah Vera Tucker, got injured as well. So he missed a big part of the season. And he's, funny enough, the only one that remains from the offensive line last year. The Jets' offensive line last year consisted of uh, Mikai Becton, Lakin Tomlinson, Dwan Brown, Connor McGovern, and Elijah Vera Tucker, like I mentioned. Now, general manager Joe Douglas has been very active in free agency, attacking the offensive line problem, knows how vital it is for Aaron Rodgers to stay healthy, because with Aaron Rodgers, it obviously gives you a chance to compete, in which a lot of these times, a lot of the times last year in these games, It looked like their offense wasn't even out there. Their defense was on the field the majority of the time. And now they've assessed it early in free agency. And now their offensive line looks almost completely brand new with Tyron Smith at left left tackle. They signed Joe Simpson from the Baltimore Ravens. He played all the games that the Ravens were in last year. So that's a good sign as well for that offensive line to stay healthy coming off of last year. Uh, Their right guard now is solidified as Elijah Vera Tucker, and their right tackle is also from the Baltimore Ravens when they traded for Morgan Moses as well. So they got two Baltimore Ravens coming in, coming off of a very good performance for the Baltimore Ravens and how good they were able to run the ball and protect Lamar Jackson. So that was a good um, evidence of what they could bring. And center is going to be Joe Tittman for them, most likely their second-round pick last year. He's the only one that's you know, you could be questionable on, but regardless of that, he is the only weak spot, I guess you could say. All the other guys are experienced, have experienced success at their other respective teams. Now they come to the Jets with 
Aaron Rodgers. Everybody knows what he could bring. I think it'll be a smoother transition now, and we're going to be able to see what this Jets offense can really do when Aaron Rodgers is able to stand in that pocket, withhold that pressure, and throw it to Garrett Wilson or hand it off to Brees Hall. But on the other hand, that's almost where it actually ends because other than Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall, who else on that offense can you confidently give the ball to? They recently just uh, departed from uh, their old tight end, CJ Uzama. They still have Alan Lazard on the team, which is a good thing for Aaron Rodgers and that familiarity there with him. But he's not really a number two receiver that you're confident can make a difference out there on the field in terms of receptions, getting yards after the catch, and all of that, being exciting for Aaron Rodgers to throw to. And on on top of that, you've assessed the offensive line. Aaron Rodgers, you expect him to play to the level that he's capable of once he comes back and he's fully reintegrated into everything, the team activities and whatnot. Now you can sort of shift the attention over to addressing the skill positions and it's give and take a lot of times in free agency where you allocate your attention and where you allocate all of your um, resources to address the needs of your team. The Jets wisely went with the offensive line, but now you look at the other markets, you look at the wide receivers that are available, um, and you look at the draft a little bit. Where do you go to improve that wide receiver too? Because now I think the conversation will shift to that. I think everyone, mostly in the media and all these other outlets, are happy with what the Jets have done at offensive line. But now you need to build on the the exciting part of the team, the decorations around the uh, hypothetical uh, cake that you've built already. You have the foundation built already with the offensive line and Aaron Rodgers. Now you need to find a wide receiver too. In that market, like I mentioned, who's really left? Because you decided to go with offensive line, you've ignored it to a little bit, and Calvin Ridley's now off the board. Keenan Allen wasn't available, but he was traded. Uh, Mike Evans re-signed with the Tampa Bay Bucks. Michael Pittman signed the long-term deal with the Indianapolis Colts. Now you look at who's really left. It's reported that Mike Williams is going to actually visit with the Jets today or potentially tomorrow morning, depending on when he lands in New Jersey. So that could still be an option. But other than that, you have Tyler Boyd and other options out there that aren't really, in my opinion, aren't really the kind of caliber that this New York Jets team needs right away because I think they're looking for more immediate success with Aaron Rodgers, obviously in the later part of his career. A lot of these offensive linemen, like I mentioned, are in the later parts of their career. So how much time, if you do get a younger wide receiver, do you have um, that he could develop into this number two receiver that you'd want to be out there every single down and distance trying to create some sort of life in this offense? You don't really, or I don't really know the answer to that. I don't think the answer is in free agency, if I'm being honest. I think they're going to have to look at options in the draft. At pick number 10, I believe, is where they're located. So you still have some good options there. I don't expect the top, top guys to be there. Uh, Marvin Harrison, Malik Neighbors, maybe Roma Dunze. Um, I'm a big fan of him. I think he'd be great for the Jets. But at the same time, you know, the Bears could draft him at number 9 and really fill out that wide receiver room for Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels. So that's another option. But even then... Do you reach, um, if you want to call it that, for a Brian Thomas, a A.D. Mitchell, a guy like that? How early do you consider it too early to draft the next tier or group of wide receivers? Because I think those three guys are in the tier of their own. Neighbors, Harrison, I think they, they won't get out of the top six. Then Roma Dunze as well, how well these other teams like him. That's still to be determined. What other teams need wide receivers that desperately need them and will trade up? That's also another factor to consider. All these pieces are moving pieces around the Jets, and they have to determine what kind of direction they want to go. Because like I said, this is a situation now where 
I think they've really established what their identity can be. They've established that Aaron Rodgers has to be protected at all times because they learned their lesson last season. And I know they gave Zach Wilson permission to seek a trade. And they actually signed Tyrod Taylor, which is a good backup option. I'm a big fan of that. But obviously you don't want to lose Aaron Rodgers again. You want to see what he could produce throwing it to Garrett Wilson. This team, I think, has so much untapped potential that I haven't even gotten into Brees Hall, who I thought was probably the most underrated player last year. A lot of the times, because they didn't have that option coming out of the backfield, they would um, throw it to Brees Hall out of the backfield. He would get a lot of receptions. When people would double-team um, Garrett Wilson, it was just almost a Brees Hall show. They didn't have that much time to throw because of the offensive line. But other than that, it was all of that mixed in with the with what Brees Hall was able to produce. And could they switch their identity, identity a little bit and go more run heavy, find a receiver that's not too um, receptions happy, isn't too um, needy on producing his own numbers? Could they find more of a blocking wide receiver that's there when you need it? Not really a bona fide number two or a number one, but just the guy that's able to fill that role block. And could they shift their identity more to running it with Brees Hall? I wouldn't be opposed to that. I'm a big fan of Brees Hall. He was having a great rookie year. Unfortunately, he got hurt. And last year, it almost looked like he didn't miss a step. And I think they actually underutilized him a lot last year. And I wouldn't be opposed to them um, riding his coattails a little bit. Because of how special I think he is, how well he could produce, not to mention with this new offensive line, he could really be a player that breaks out and jumps really from year two to year three and becomes the face of this team. We all know what the running back market is for these young running backs and basically any of the running backs nowadays. If you have a young one like Brees Hall just in his third year, I don't see why you want to want to use him to the best of his ability as much as you can. In doing that, I think it could work out well for them if their options aren't there at wide receiver. Obviously, if they draft a good one um, in the draft and still use Brees Hall a lot, that's probably best case scenario. But if the other option is just try to find a cheap option for them in free agency or trying to find just the plug and play guy that isn't too exciting on offense I don't think that would be a bad idea because of how special Brees Hall is that's where I stand on the New York Jets right now I'm loving what they did with the offensive line that's obviously huge Tyron Smith is a player that will surely be missed by the Dallas Cowboys and all the New York Jets fans um, anybody in that organization I'm sure is happy to have him in the building regardless of age or whatnot if you're good, you're good, and that's what the Jets needed right now, a player of his caliber, and I'm excited to see where they go heading into next season. But in saying that, I will transition into our second break of this show, and on the other side of it, all the Steelers news is coming with the trade of Kenny Pickett to the Philadelphia Eagles and all these storylines and reports behind that, as well as Justin Fields getting traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers and now filling out a new quarterback room with Russell Wilson over there in Pittsburgh. All of that coming up on the GSMC Chipshot Football Podcast up next. <laughs> 